Baim. I'm the uh, director of the Center for Energy Research here at the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. Our uh, goal is to try to bring solar energy to the forefront here as a source of energy. As you may know, Las Vegas is a very rapidly growing place and it has tremendous amounts of sun. The solar power comes in a variety of uh, denominations, let's say. There are the kinds of things that you would put on individual houses. I recently put on a system on my own house that uh, generates some of my power that I use in my house and that power that I don't use from that system is funneled back to the utility. And the utility has quite a few of these kinds of systems now that they're putting on houses. That is readily available, easily installed. The problem is it's fairly expensive. Now that's a thread that ties together almost all of solar technologies. Many of them are fairly expensive yet. And part of that problem is there hasn't been enough demand to warrant manufacturing them in big quantities. And uh, because there hasn't been enough demand, then they haven't been ma manufactured in big enough quantities to bring their price down. We found uh, historically that when the production of photovoltaic cells doubles, it brings the cost down by 20%, and it's been doubling very regularly over the uh, last several years. However, once you've put in one of these kinds of systems, that freezes your cost of your energy at that point. So if electrical prices, for example, were to continue to go up over the years, uh, you don't feel those increases. Otherwise, the grid acts as a big battery, basically. You put power into it when you've got excess power, and you draw power off of it when you need the power. And it's without all of the uh, cumbersome aspects of batteries. Batteries tend to be the Achilles heel of all those kinds of systems. There are some political aspects behind it, too, um, including the price of oil. If the price of oil were to continue to climb, uh, it would bring it on more quickly. That tends to be a lot political associated with that. And so that's something that's really hard to predict. I've been in this business for a long time, and I've seen it come in waves and go away in waves. And the thing that's a little bit different about it this time is this is happening much more on a local state level than it has in the past. During the Carter administration, uh, there was an effort to try to develop solar power, and that was primarily a federal and then when we had a new president in who didn't have the same philosophy, it all went away. But now it's dispersed into the states. Many utilities, including our local utility here, Nevada Power, offer rebates for putting on systems, and that buys down some of the price. Uh, and so you may have that available to you. There is a federal tax credit associated with that uh, also. So there are some various uh, aids that can help you in terms of the cost. We've got a lot of really neat projects going on here, all the way from uh, ways of uh, bringing sunlight into buildings that are somewhat uh, uh, different than have been done in the past. This vehicle started life as an all-electric vehicle with a, a big bunch of batteries in the back of it. We have modified this so it's still an electric vehicle, but instead of plugging it in to recharge it, it carries its battery charger with it in the form of a fuel cell. The fuel cell runs off of hydrogen and brings in ambient air, uh, makes electricity, and makes water vapor from those things. So there's really no emissions associated with it except water vapor. It's not a simple thing to just snap your fingers and have hydrogen. But with a, a renewable source, it, it turns out it's, it's very nice. It gives you a nice storable fuel and um, something you can carry around with you and run your vehicle off of. On the roof here, we've got a unit that's made by a company called Sunlight Direct, and it's a dish where the sunlight is concentrated into a center into uh, fiber optics. And then the fiber optics take the light down into the building and you can use it for lighting. So here you can see some of the fibers here that have the sunlight in them. So that's sunlight that's lighting those things. But the thing that's interesting, I think, is these lighting fixtures here have two plastic tubes in them. So these are not regular fluorescents in here. These are two flat plastic tubes that are lit by those fibers that are coming off of that thing. So, so when the sunlight's out, we've got light here all the time. 
when the sunlight goes away then the regular fluorescents that are in there come on and so it gives us a constant lighting all the time but saves us a daytime lighting. Somehow when the price of energy goes up though, whether it's because it's scarce, because there's a tax on it or whatever the reason is, that will cause us to stop and say, hmm, maybe I better back off just a little.